like we were talking about before, like Shady Aftermath era, that was a really great era now too. So um, I was curious, like, I'm going to ask about Lloyd Banks, but I, I want to know, like, when you knew you got the Lloyd Banks placement, did you immediately tell your brother? Because you guys grew up with that stuff. Yeah, he was the first person I told. <laughs> All right, yeah. like, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? Yeah, the first one I got, he was, um, he was obviously, like, the first person I told. And then I told, like, you know, my girlfriend and a couple of other, um, couple of other people. I didn't tell, like, a ton of people. Cause I wasn't sure if it was final, but then, um, you know, I, tw I tweeted because at this time, obviously he didn't follow me and I sent, uh, sent the beat through his engineer. I tweeted, I was like, I'm uh, pretty sure I just heard I got a song with like Lloyd Banks and then Lloyd Banks retweeted it and he followed me. So I, at that point I knew that, um, you know, he was definitely going to use whatever, you know, he recorded. So. Now, what we were talking about before, like, so when I did my research on you, I understood like you seen the email go out, but you also reached out to his engineer too. Do you think that if you didn't follow up, I mean, sorry, if you didn't see that email or follow up or find his engineer on IG, do you think it would have went different? Um, yeah, I mean, at that point I, I'd sent like Lloyd Banks a DM like probably like a year ago, but he wasn't following me just um inquiring to send beats because that's one thing I do I reach out I'm not like one of those people that's worried about how to look later um you know when you reach out to an artist like hey what's up definitely want to send you like some production like I've sent that to you know literally hundreds and hundreds of artists major small um you know because sometimes you get an answer sometimes you won't but um I think um that is definitely it's not like a super high percentage um it's not a high percentage way so you got to be innovative and sometimes you got to find people that maybe have a little less followers um so they're more inclined to actually see the message um and you know I've, i like again i reached out and found like lloyd banks's engineer uh jason at the time and um that's how i got the first placement now, I understand there were some locks that he heard there because the first beat that he did over yours. Right. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was the first one. Now, when, when you, like, see, this is what I like about your production now, too, because when you hear the production of course, the Edible, I'm like, that's the Alchemist influence right there. Yeah, it was um, a lot of, like, the grimy, um, like, just, like, the grimy, like, you know, that type of, that type of feel. Well, yeah, I mean, like him, like obviously all the like the Griselda producers, they have, you know, they've obviously, they've, um, you know, they've had their influence as well. Um, but at the time, you know, I tried to also think about, you know, sending him what I could hear him on and what I feel like he would like, you know, rap on the most. You know, I felt like it wasn't the time, at least, you know, to be like super creative and try to send something off the wall to grab his attention. You. When I first start sending somebody beats, I try to send them stuff that um, is like, you know, kind of similar to stuff that they've used, you know, before just to kind of, you know, initially grab, you know, their attention in their ear. Could you understand your sound? Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I try, um, I try to honestly listen to most of a whole project or at least like the last five songs somebody put out before I even DM them or send them a message asking to send beats, which, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people do that because it doesn't seem like it. You know, I, I see artists post stuff all the time saying like, you guys are sending me like so-and-so kind of beats. Like these aren't like the kind of beats I you use. Myself. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, people are like, they're trying to be like so quick with it that, you know, but you know, you gotta, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot at that point because, you know, um, that could be like your shot, and then you know they might they might not never listen to anything you send them again, you know. So I think it's important to try to like listen to the people how much you're gonna send beats. Listen to them first, and then you know always try to check their most recent song that they have out. That's like you know that's what I do. Okay, that's good tips for anyone watching out there. Now I like how we talked about how everything goes in cycles now too. Now. When you said that you reached out to Lloyd Banks, because like you see the DM from before he was following you, but do you think like if you were to start at that time, it would have been different production? 
because like Griselda, you, like this Griselda sound is like, with, I always say Rock Marciano inspired that way, but like, do you think that if he would have picked your production around that time, it would have been different from what we heard now? Um, Honestly, I I would say yeah, because I was very in tune. I would have, there's no way I wouldn't have known what to send Lloyd Banks because I listened to him, you know, so much. And even though, um, you know, hip hop and his sound has changed. He has a very consistent sound. So I would, I kind of felt like I'd always have an idea of, um, you know, like what to send him. I don't, I don't, I feel like, you know, even if it was like the previous year, if I had a chance to send him something, I think, you know, I think he would ended up taking it. Now, when landing on your production, like, cause it's not treated as a mixtape. And we all know Banks mixtapes. They pretty much sound like albums. But when he says it's a mixtape, it's a mixtape. Hey, we ain't arguing. But when he yeah. says it's an album now, too, like, what was that feeling like knowing that you got production on an album that he considers an album that you grew up listening to? Like, what, what was that feeling? Oh, it was a great feeling. I was excited to um, just to hear it, you know, just to hear, like, him on, like, my beat. Because, um, you know, even if I, like, of course, the inevitable one was, like, his return from, like, a, a long hiatus. And even if I didn't have three songs on there, I was definitely going to listen to that album and listen intently and closely like I did with um, his other um, his other stuff. So just to be, like, a part of, like, that moment, because I think that was definitely a, a, a hip-hop, like, moment. And to be... Yeah, and to be, you know, almost like a, like considerably like a lead for that moment because, you know, I had three, I was the only producer that had three um, three songs on that project. So um, it was like, it was definitely, it was it was definitely a good feeling because it was somebody that, you know, I had like, like you said, grown up like listening to. And, um, you know, I, I was definitely glad to be a part of it. Now, for the people who don't know, what song did you produce on that album? Um, I did uh, Sidewalks, um, Empathy with Freddie Gibbs, and then Falsified with Ransom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Ransom. Right, right there. He's been on the show, too. Uh, so knowing that, not one, not two, but three that you got on there, like, when you, when did you find out, like, you put the features on it? Like, like everybody else? Um, yeah, for... For the Freddie Gibbs one, that was like a last I minute. Right because I remember he tweeted something and then Gibbs responded to that. Yeah, I think, yeah, that came late. So I didn't know about, I found that out when he posted like an updated credit list on um, Instagram. So that's when I found out about that. Um, but after like, you know, like we got all like the uh, like the paperwork and stuff situated, that's when I knew about the um, the features for like the first one. Uh, which was uh first was ransom and then I thought I had you know then I knew I had two other songs and then um one of, like empathy featured like Freddie Gibbs and I was like probably like the day or two before like the album actually released so that was um that was a big moment too because um Freddie Gibbs is obviously you know he's a very successful and big artist but Freddie Gibbs is also somebody that I um started to build a relationship back with um back in the day um, through Twitter, uh, like we followed each other. Um, he gave me his email. I sent him two beats, um, and he said he wanted to use them. He sent me like his number, and then um, after that, things just kind of like dematerialized. I know he had like legal stuff going on, and we kind of just lost touch. But I just thought it was like ironic um, that I ended up getting yeah full circle. I ended up getting like a, a song with him on it um, through Lloyd Bing. So. I thought that was, a, that was a cool moment, too. I believe, like, that's how the universe works. Like, when you want something, you put it out there. It may not come in at a certain moment, but sometimes you just never know. In life. If you really want it, if it's, like, really in your heart, it will come full circle. Right. Now, even, like, with, like, producing for, like, somebody like that, like, I, like, after the album comes out now, too, like, we don't even think about the second one now, too, but, like, did you follow up with him? Like, did you say like, yo, I appreciate it. It's like, yo, can I send more? Absolutely. Um, and I had to stay, I had to stay consistent with it too, because obviously, you know, people get busy. There's a lot that goes on. And, you know, I had, um, I, he followed me he, at that time. He only followed me on uh, like Twitter. 
So um, after the album came out, I told him what I thought of the album and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, I was just like, um, I got a ton more uh, to send. And I kept, I kept sending, I kept sending, um, and I stayed consistent. So, I mean, even after the album came out, I was still sending as consistently as I was to get the, um, you know, to get the placements originally. So it was definitely, you know, uh, groundwork on like my part, but that's also, um, that's how he works too. He, you know, he's consistently, consistently working on stuff. And like, so I understand that you, he had a meet and greet and you went and seen him at one of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, um, he had a show actually on Long Island cause that's where, that's where I live. The show was like super close to where I live. So um, I followed up by going to um, the show that he was doing. There was like a meet and greet after. Um, I reached out to uh, like some people that I knew that were like helping like host it to see if I could like, you know, get in there um, and get like access and stuff like that. Um, so they got me in and then, you know, I waited until he was done, you know, taking care of like all his fans and stuff. And then I spoke with him um, like after and stuff and, you know, introduced myself in person. So, you know, I was just another way to follow up and to try to ensure that you follow up so you can, um, you know, keep a consistent line of work because, what I'm even learning now, like, um, you know, seeing somebody and meeting them in person, it, it does go a long way. Oh, yeah, because you can sense the energy, like, you're face to face with them. Right, right. Wow, you're a nice guy. Wait until all of he's done. I'm waiting till he's done meeting this fan and stuff like that. Wow, you're a nice guy, man. I would be, I would be I'm like, I'm like <laughs> well, I hope this guy don't get tired after all this. Yeah, I mean, I kind of figured that too, but I, I know his fans, like, you know, they paid. Um, you know, they, they, you know, they pay for the show and yeah. pay for that stuff. So, you know, to me, like, you know, I get it business first on that end and stuff. And, you know, I knew eventually, even if I didn't get to see him at that point, I knew that, you know, we figure out enough or I'd be consistent enough to at some point, hopefully cross paths. Now, like, even like with their course and then, and then uh, my bad, I'm just going to call it Cody. I don't want to stutter it now. <laughs> uh, for Cody too, now too, I understand now too, like, like, you pretty much produced half that album. Like, it's crazy now, too. But also now, too, like, how did you find out? Like, like was it, like, piece by piece you sent them beats for it? Or did you, like, just find out, like, I'm using these ones? And he just gave you, like, the final ones he would do. No, it was um, beat by beat. Um, I got, like, um, in, like, a like kind of like a groove. I was sending him a lot because he, um, he, uh, hit me like on Instagram. He was like, "I'm back to writing like heavy. Start, um, you know, keep flooding my email. Send me like these." Huh? Oh, he had you too. Yeah. So he like he followed up like um um because I was oh I was like there was a time where like I'm sure he took like a little break after the album to you know kind of like decompress and stuff. I was still sending during that time, but um then he specifically reached out and was like, "Yeah, I'm back to work." Um you know, keep sending. So, you know, I, I started sending and um, like he was, he works quick. Like I send like a beat that and he would tell me like, yeah, I really like this beat. And he'd have like, you know, the song recorded and done like sometimes within like hours and say, okay. all right, hold that one. Like um, he was like, all right, so we got one, keep sending. And I send more and I just got in, I got like, you know, got consistent. Like I guess I consistently was finding the sound that he was looking for. And then, um, like, they piled up, and we, you know, we got, like, a ton of records, um, ton of records done. Do you think, like, because you met him in person, he kind of senses, like, your energy? It's like, man, there's a good guy right here. Like, do you think, like, that also helps, too? Um, I think that it does. Like, I think it helps in a lot of situations because, um, you know, like you said, it's different when you meet somebody in person. You can kind of sense, like, their vibes and, you know, um, so I definitely think, and he's, he's very, he's like a very low key, like laid back, like type of person. And he seems like he does kind of work off of like, you know, people's vibes and energy. So I think, you know, I think meeting him in person definitely did, um, definitely did help. See, I like how that too, like, <clears throat> you could be cocky and like, I did this, I did this, but I like how you're humble and you're like, you know, I, I'm grateful for that moment. So it's good to know that there's people still out there who are grateful for the opportunity and not just like, I did this, 
so now I'm done. It's it's good to see that nowadays because it can also inspire somebody who actually like found you because of it. Right. Um, and I think um, I think a lot of that stuff is like, you know, it's kind of like personality based. And you know, I try not to um, I try not to diminish anything I've done either. Um, you know, it is obviously to work with a multi platinum artist like that is it's a big deal. And you know, he's selective with who he wants to work with and his beats and things like that. So it's a big deal. But to me, um, you know, I just I have so much that I want to do, like in music. And you know, for me, everything is just like a step. And you know, once I accomplish something, I'm already kind of looking, um, you know, kind of looking ahead to the next. Um, a bit of a gift and a curse. I'm trying to be more present in the moments where I do have like, you know, um amazing like moments like producing over half an album. Yeah, um, yeah. Like Lloyd Banks and things like that. But um, you know, I also try to say like this was great, this was um this was excellent. Um, but you know, I, I want to do a whole album or I wanna, you know, move up the ladder and you know, I wanna do multiple whole albums. So that's I just keep everything in perspective for myself. So it's easy to keep yourself humble that way. Sounds good to know. And like even like with like like Cody too, like like I like how an artist like him, like they'll give an upcoming producer like you a shot. And like that shows like the genuine character. He even said it on Twitter. He's like, Y'all know me. I give upcoming producers a shot now too. But for them to put like a feature like a Benny the Butcher or like a Conway the Machine on your production must build your confidence too. It's like because they didn't have to. He's like, I'm keeping this one for myself, and they put the feature on like a more well-known producer. Right. I um I sense that like Lloyd Banks is he's an artist artist, and I say that um you know not to like disrespect any other artist, but I think he wants the best sound that suits him that he can use, and he doesn't. He's one of those people that truly doesn't care if you're a. a quadruple platinum producer or you got two followers on Instagram if it's the sound that he's looking for and he likes it I feel like he'll use it and another thing that's full circle now too because I always say this maybe somebody may you probably agree on this Eminem produced some of Boyd Banks best songs and stuff but I'm apart from you but Eminem all probably produced some of his most like well-known songs that we know right so when 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 we look, look back on it now too, like we all know there's gonna be a Cody three. So thanks, yo. Can you get my guy Cody three, man? Because yo, we we love your production on this. Like socialized. That recently got a video, man. Like the, like I like how like when the certain beats that he picks from you, like now too. Like do you have like do you know that you were making those for him? Like like I'm sending it for this, or just like kind of ones like I forgot about. This. No, I I was um honestly I focused my goal was to get as many songs as I could for Cody too. So I like you know I focus on I, like for months every beat I made was for the intention of um get sending two Lloyd Banks for that project and um that's why I ended up you know getting so many. I was able to kind of lock in on like you know I guess my own sound but also his sound too. Um, and just send consistently. So, um, you know, I was surprised. I was like, I wasn't surprised, but at the same time, I'm surprised. Because also as a producer, you know, when somebody records a song, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make the cut of the album. An album can be 14 songs, and they have 50 songs that they have to cut down to the 14. So, you know, for like, you know, for you to get like that high percentage of the songs means that you were you know, you were obviously making some some high caliber um, music. And dedication. Right, yep. 